<laughs> oh, I forgot my patch. Should I put it on? Oh, get your patch on. There we go. Arg! Arg! Oh, hi, oh, welcome back. <laughs> I love your patch, Brian. That is perfect. I actually love being a pirate. The pirates are so fun. But, you know, after that huge epic battle between Captain Hook and Peter coming in and saving Wendy at the very last minute, Peter still makes the decision not to go back with Wendy to London. And that's the part of the story that always, I don't know, it just kind of touches my heart because I think of poor Peter all alone in Neverland by himself. You know, and all of the lost boys and Wendy, Michael and John, they go back to the nursery. They're homesick and they're missing their mom. And mother and father darling all of a sudden just welcomes everybody. They <laughs> <laughs> have 20 children. <laughs> I know, thousands of them. And they just, they welcome them. Um, but something, there's something about that nursery and something about that sense of home that Peter longs for. And years later, he comes back through the window and that's when he meets an adult Wendy. And the thing that I love the best is that, that even though she feels that she's grown up and she says, I've forgotten how to fly, she sends her daughter Jane with Peter for her own adventures in Neverland. Yeah, I love that part. And I love that it's, that as magical as Neverland is, Obviously, home has just as much magic or a different type of magic to bring them all back, to make them want to live their lives and grow up, which is kind of cool to think that magic is both, but in completely different ways. In totally different ways. And I think one of the things that I love best about the music in Peter Pan is that you have these like rip roaring fun songs like Captain Hook's Walt, Blimey, Slimey, Captain Hook. And you have, you know, I Got a Crow, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And, you know, I'm flying. There's always these big songs. But, you know, it also has these really tender songs in Peter Pan. I mean, we have we have two lullabies. We have Tender Shepherd and Distant Melody. And then really, Neverland itself as a song is just this beautiful melody that just takes you to this magical world. Um, and I guess I love that idea of being tucked in you know, that time right before, before you fall off to sleep. Um, it's just such a special time when, when it's like that bridge between the end of day and the beginning of sleep. Um, and so to be tucked in, to have a lullaby, to have a story is such a special thing. Um, so I have a challenge for everybody. And okay, you too, Bridie. Me too. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so the challenge is to write your own lullaby. Ooh, good one. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be Did fun. Do you have a lullaby that you were sung to when you were little? Yeah, you know what, we had a bunch and we had a tape that my mom used to put on, but actually when I lived in New York City and I babysat all the time, that mm -hmm. was like my thing as a babysitter is oh. I would sing all the kids to sleep. And so when I left to go on tour and knew that I wasn't going to be seeing the kids for a while, I actually made a lullaby album. And that was my gift to the kids when I said goodbye to them, because it was, you know, a gift that I could still give them because I treasured that time too, just as much as they did. I, it meant a lot to me too. You know, I always sang to my kids before they went to bed and for um, my twin boys, I actually made up a song for both of them with their names um, mm -hmm. using different, <laughs> you know, using different melodies, but it was really fun. I mean, what are some of the things that, what is, what are some of the images and wishes that you would want to hear right before you went to bed? I actually love Neverland. The images in Neverland where mm -hmm. time is not a thing. Right. Yeah. Or all of it's just it's putting you in a in a dreamlike sleep with magic at the brink of what you're about to sleep into, hoping that your dreams are full of that, of just peace and ease. And um, I, I really do love that song Neverland because of that. 
I know, and I am so glad. So for everybody, and the link below, Bridie has recorded um, her singing the whole song of Neverland because we've sung snippets of it, but the whole song is so beautiful. So you can play that just to listen to, or maybe right before you go to bed, which would be a wonderful lullaby. Yeah. But, right. But it is Friday. Fabulous, fun Friday. And you are dressed as a pirate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that means we have to at least have a couple fun activities, right? So what are right. they? So one of my favorite things, I know this is going to surprise you, Bridie, but I kind of like to be the boss and be in charge. <laughs> so one of my favorite games is called Captain Says. Now it's just like Simon Says, except you get to be Captain Hook. So you say something as the captain and everyone else has to follow. But if you don't say captain says, then they're in trouble and they lose the game. I love it. I love, <laughs> so I love Simon says. Say. Captain says, salute. Captain says, um, tap your nose. Hum a, hum a song. La, 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 la. Oh, you're so good at that. <laughs> you're such a good listener. I am a good listener. I do try. But I love that game. And there's another version that we sort of play called Captain on Deck, which is sort of like that, but a little bit different, right? It is a little bit different. And this is really fun. We love playing this in the um, classrooms. Um, so it's a little bit hard. I'm not going to lie. It's a little bit hard if you um, don't have more than a couple people at home. But right. I encourage you to do this with anybody at home who's willing to play because it's super fun. So you're gonna have one person be Captain Hook and he is the captain, right? The true captain, he, you, he is the one that you're waiting to inspect. The rest of the people are going to be pirates, which of course is the most fun, Arg. And you can shoot, well, you can choose anything, but we usually offer three different things. So we offer one of them being to hoist the sails because if you're on a pirate ship, you're gonna have to hoist those sails, right? Or if you got in trouble, you might have to walk the plank. And so you're all bound up and you're having to walk the plank. You might also have to swab the deck, like take one of those big mops. Can you imagine like what would be on a pirate ship and ooh, swabbing the deck? So you can pick some other items that you think a pirate might do on a ship. And the, the point is that you're doing all of these to-dos, right? But you're doing them and you are waiting for the captain to say captain on deck and then all the pirates have to get into tip-top shape okay. and if the captain sees you and sees that you didn't do this in time or you didn't say aye aye captain you're out okay. does that make sense yeah you totally. have to say aye aye captain aye aye captain and your hands have to be here so let's we'll try again okay so i'm captain hook let me get my he doesn't have a patch, but he's going to right now. And so you're going to pick whatever it is, whether you're hoisting the sails or swabbing the deck. Okay. So you start doing that, Miss Jody. <laughs> Captain on deck. Hi, Captain. That was pretty good. She did that very quickly. Very good. So you would play this until somebody doesn't do it as well. You know what also might be fun? is maybe having mom play Captain Hook, mom or dad, while they're making dinner. And if you're just in the kitchen and around, then they could suddenly turn around and tell you Captain on deck and you have to be ready. Aye, aye, Captain. I love that. Yeah. It's such a fun, silly game to play. Plus, it's always fun to just be a pirate. And pirates are so easy to be, right? I mean, you can pull scarves or bandanas or anything to be a pirate. And totally. you always have a hook ready to have. Yep. What um, else do we do? One of the other things that I love about Peter Pan residency, but also just as an activity, um, I know if you've ever taken an acting class or worked with partners, you might have done this activity. It's just a simple shadowing activity. So two people work together, one person's the leader and one person's the follower, and you work together to just follow exactly the face, facial expression, the movement, and everything together. So I'm going to lead first, Bridie, and you follow okay. me, okay? Ready. Yay! 
yeah, that's so cool. But then sometimes the other person can be the leader and the other person is the follower. Okay, and my so when you lead, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have really good fish lips <laughs> yeah. now, the whole purpose of that though is that if somebody would be walking in that you guys are working so close together and once you've done it for a while you're not really sure who's leading and who's following and you're really working together which is such a wonderful thing um, to experience and it's a really powerful thing in the theater because that's what you want you want everybody working together um, so you don't know who's leading who's following it's all interconnected that's what an ensemble is all about it's true so one more thing, right? But we also thought, you know, hopefully this weather is going to change and spring will really, really happen. Um, so we've got to find out new reasons to go outside. And since we're pirates, and since that's a big part of Peter Pan, uh, we thought it would be really fun to go on a treasure hunt. So there's two parts of the treasure hunt. One is that you get to make a map. So you can figure out where X marks the spot and you can give clues along the way and you can draw that map of what the tree looks like and maybe there's, you know, your garage or maybe there's something, uh, a marker that's going to lead people to that treasure. So treasure hunts are really fun. Making a map is really fun. And as always, all of the activities will be down um, on its own little PDF form right underneath that you can print out or look at and read just to refresh your memory. And just in case it is really cold outside, because as we're recording this, Miss Jody, it is currently snowing outside of my window. So just in case, it could be really fun to do it inside too, because oh, that's so you true. know your house better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So to make a, a treasure map um, in your house could be kind of fun and cool. Maybe it's something you set up for your parents to find, not just you or a sibling or somebody else to do with you. Yeah, I love that. I'm just really hopeful that spring will really come sometime. Me too. Yes, it's got to happen. Yeah. So um, the other thing is that we have talked so many th about so many things about Peter Pan, but we do have some fun links below. One is a little clip on Jerome Robbins, who, I mean, he's just amazing as a director, as a choreographer, as somebody who is somebody who is able to conceptualize and visualize um, story and make them in movement. And he's just a fabulous um, director and he's an icon in musical theater. So he's really fun yeah. to learn about. He really is. He's a visionary and he's very well known too for taking shows that haven't done well and suddenly transforming them to be huge, huge hits and successful shows that are still done time and time again today. So true. So there's some interesting links below. And again, if you want to check them out, please do. And if not, don't feel the pressure. But there's a lot of fun things to explore and to look at. Yeah. Is it time for a goodbye song? It is time for a goodbye song. But before we do that, we have to do one final preview. What's what's our yeah. musical that we are going to explore next week? Do, 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 do. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. Oh, I love that musical. It's so fun. And it's so totally different than the ones that we've been exploring. Because You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown is really a small musical. And all of these other musicals have been about these big, huge ideas and all of these dramatic moments with, with pirates and battles and epic things. But Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown is about the wonder of the everyday moment. And I love that about Charlie Brown. Yeah, and the everyday people too. We focus yeah, a little bit more on more than one character besides just Peter Pan or just Cinderella. We're focusing on Charlie Brown and his gang, his Peanuts gang and all of his friends. Yeah, so we'll get to meet Linus and Lucy and Snoopy. So okay. I'm looking forward to that. But we need to return to our Pirate Center. Are we ready to sing our- I love how you think pirates have centers. <laughs> <laughs> They probably your center is like <laughs> instead of the zen. It's, yes, they're they're a little bit frenetic. They should, yes, that's true. Of it. 
All right, so we're gonna do it like we always do, guys, where Miss Bridie will sing and then Miss Jody will sing. So join in with either one of us and don't forget our movements that we've been teaching you too. Okay. Are we ready? I'm so ready. Here we go, ready? Oh, I'm gonna put my, I gotta put my patch on for this one. Oh yeah, you do. Here we go. Who's the very best class in the land? That be us, that be us. Who's the coolest in school and is ready to rule? That be us, that be us. Actors who share their hearts. A singers who sing. Dancers who tap their toes. And kids who will do anything. Anything! <laughs> Flying, sighing, that be us. Arg, arg. I love it. <laughs> we'll see you guys on Monday.